Hey guys, welcome back to Real Housewives Recaps. Today we're talking in just like that, the writer's room. You guys, <laughs> I've actually just finished recording this episode and had to come back and re-record the opening to explain what happened. So I start out talking about, I think it's episode four, some of my best friends. It gets so annoying. You hear me have a mental breakdown in the middle of this episode where I just can't anymore. I can't. They talk to us like we're too stupid. Uh, It's worth listening to. I think it's about 10 minutes of that. And then I just lose my mind. And I say, I just got to go away. And then I come back and I regroup. And we go ahead and skip to the next episode, which is Tragically Hip, where they recap the episode Tragically Hip with Carrie's hip surgery and Che and Miranda hookup, right? So I thought, you know what? Let's make this a long episode. You'll get part of that one. You'll get part you'll get part of both episodes. And let's make it a long one. So let's get into this. Before we jump into it, I did want to let you know I have a Patreon now. So check that out. Patreon.com slash Real Housewives Recap. And you'll find my logo and you'll find us. So take a look at that. See if it works out. The first episode's free. You can watch it here on YouTube. After that, you can check them out on Patreon. We're doing the original Sex in the City series. So we're picking back up with the fourth episode of the podcast called Some of My Best Friends. It's with Kelly Goff, G-O-F-F speaking. They, of course, Michael Patrick King has to be on everything, so he's in this one. We'll still hear Alisa Zeritsky and Julie Rottenberg, uh, some of the other writers, and Kelly is part of the writer's room as well. So can't wait to hear what illuminating things they have to say about this mess. Let's get into it. The idea of, of the thing that all of us, I think, have experienced and probably have a little fatigue of, right, which is the people who have read every book whether it's miranda or whether it's charlotte and really are are trying really hard and maybe they're trying so hard that they're actually missing the big picture nope i think you're the one missing the big picture this is a tv show we have gotten to know these characters we don't (laughs) we don't need to be taught a lesson thank you so much of how to get it right in life and i think a lot of us are kind of feeling that Um, right now and so we wanted to really have fun with that so this crap we've gotten on the show is them having fun with that and i and i feel like that's really where we get to the end of the episode right which is charlotte was so focused on kind of checking the boxes of in the same way i I think what i compared it to as the sex in the city super fan that i am to when charlotte decided she wanted to convert to judaism in the original series and it's like i am gonna get this right if it kills me and there are people who feel that way about race but unfortunately as we know in our society it doesn't really work like that again i ask you what does this have to do with sex in the city what why do we need to be taught a lesson why it seems to me the only ones getting it wrong here are the writers. They're the ones taking 25 steps backwards. It's not really a merit badge that's like, you nailed race today, <laughs> right? But Charlotte's... Manic laughter, manic laughter, take a shot. The kind of person who wants the merit badge. So she's like, I, I, I don't care. I'm going to do whatever it takes. And there is innate humor in saying that, you know, that the 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 earnestness and I'm going to get an A plus on, on making black friends. I'm just so mad that these are the people that got a hold or got the opportunity to write for these characters. They've turned Charlotte into a complete idiot. And, you know, realizing like, wait, was there not even a test? I don't understand what's happening. You know, (laughs) (laughs) The good student. Everyone's trying to be a good student. And this is really about walking the walk rather than just talking the talk. Oh, my gosh. Seriously, there's going to be a uh, the the shape of my head is going to be on my wall. That's how hard I'm hitting my head against the wall. This is crazy. Why? How self-important are these assholes that they think they need to be our teachers? And like all the good Sex and the City stories. He is the biggest creeper to me. His voice really grosses me out. It's really important to not just go out on a limb, but that limb needs to crack. The only thing cracked here is the very shitty writing. And I was so excited to... Fuck up all the characters? Tackle what... For us in the writer's room, we felt very comfortable talking about these really hard issues. And I feel like as a white person, I was excited to have the white person fuck up. And Oh, my God. You guys, I'm going to barf. 
these people are the biggest idiots I've ever heard in my life. They don't know how to be people. They assume we don't know how to be people. And these are the people trying to teach us. Got that? Stumble and make a horrible faux pas. And I love that Kristen was so game, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, we all... Oh, you're all so brave. All felt like we needed to take this next step, even if it felt a little dangerous. Yeah, I mean, in the writing room is one thing. On the page and handing the script out is a whole other journey. And I always felt enormously grounded by Kelly's constant belief that this belonged in the world. There were... So let me break it down for you. You got a room full of overpaid clowns that are just yesing each other, thinking that this is a fantastic idea And this is what we all want to see. No wonder the ratings are so fucking bad. Two things specifically in this episode. And the first thing was LTW's daughter Gabrielle speaking French. And the second thing was Kelly's emotional reaction to a room full of black millionaires. What the fuck are we talking about? I'm sorry, I try not to throw the F word around willy-nilly, but I think it's well-deserved. What are we talking about? Part of why those images were so important to me is because one of the things I was really excited about when you talked about some of these new characters, Michael, is having the opportunity to show diversity within diversity. This woman has her head so far up her own ass. I've just, she gives Samantha Irby a run for her money. Meaning that a lot of shows, they present, you know, the one black character who then has to represent every black person in the history of the universe. Okay, I'm just going to go out and and point something out here. You assholes are the ones that wrote one black character for each of the main cast members in this reboot. So aren't you doing the same thing? Um, And so they end up having to embody sort of this just random hodgepodge of stereotypes or cliches. But again, isn't that what you've done now to the main cast members? You've turned Charlotte into a complete idiot. Miranda doesn't understand that people of color can be professors what what or whatever it was that a particular network felt they wanted to say to black audiences or to latinx audiences or to other diverse audiences and so what i was so excited about is that particularly by having the opportunity um, presented through ltw and naya is that we would get to show a diversity of black womanhood that's that's a really rare opportunity and frankly a gift What show do you think you're on right now? And part of why I was excited about that is not just for white audiences to see that, but because... These writers think we are so stupid that we need to come to this TV show to learn how to be human beings around other human beings. Yep, head up your ass alert. Yeah, I can't do this part. She's making me so... I I just... It's not even fun. I mean, it's just... We're the dumb ones, right? The ones that watch the show. That's basically what's being conveyed right now. So I'm going to skip ahead because I just can't, I can't do this with her. Is the moment where Charlotte walks in. This is a hot button and mistakes um, Shauna for Gwen, which is another black woman that she knows in the Upper East Side school system. And- Never happens. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you guys they're so funny if you don't if you didn't know that the laughter tells you oh my gosh we were wrong about this show the whole time right and, and it, it made people very nervous it made people very nervous and it was a, 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 a the last rewrite in the script is because kelly and all of us samantha kelly rechna julie and elisa were like well charlotte can't walk in and just be the know-it-all we have to turn her into the asshole Right. Because we've just Save done an episode day. about White Savior. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> especially after she's berating Harry to be perfect. So everybody started to panic about the mistaken identity comedy beat, which is the most important thing for all of us. And Kelly was like, oh, yeah. And actually in editing, people were worried. And I called none of the writers, by the way. I called up uh, Kelly and I said, Kelly, I'm in the editing room. Tell me again why <laughs> Charlotte mistaking Sasha for Gwen is important. So first of all, this has happened so many times, and I have to tell you that what's really hilarious is we actually did the really G-rated, nice version of this because we could- Oh my God, you guys, they're telling us it could have been worse. 
could have gone so much further. I mean, I think I've told you, I mean, Susan once had a, a, a hilarious incident, hilariously awful, that we still reference because a woman was so invested when she realized she'd confused her for another black woman that she insisted Susan's own daughter went to a different school. <laughs> Manny Claff, Manny Claff. So she literally yeah, was go so, in. she they was like, I'm, not, I'm down. not letting this go. Are you sure your daughter does not go? Are you 100% sure? Wow. Yeah, people double down, mm -hmm. especially when they want to be perfect. Yeah, and I was going to say, Michael, I actually think the reason this one more than anything else probably uh, pushed so many buttons is it's because the one probably most people are guilty of, right? People who read the right books, right. donate to the right causes, vote for the right candidates. And again, saying it like this means that we, the audience, need to be taught things and that they, the writers, are the smartest ones in the room that will be teaching us these things. You guys, I can't. I'm going to lose my mind. I have been enjoying recapping these podcasts so much, but I actually find myself pissed off at this one. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take a deep breath. I'm going to come back with a better attitude. And we may just skip ahead. Let's get to some more recent episodes because I just can't. I I just can't with this, right? I just, I guess I just need to be taught a lesson or something. Okay, it's future Jen here. I've had a change of heart and a better attitude about things. Not about this stupid writer's podcast, but here's what. I think we can have more fun with this, so I'm not willing to let this go. I, I'm just going to jump into a better episode. How about that? Let's go with the Tragically Hip episode where they talk about, in my opinion, maybe one of the worst ones where Carrie has her hip surgery and then Che and Miranda get it on in the kitchen. This episode is with Samantha Irby. So you know we're in for a roller coaster ride here. Let's just make this a long episode. Let's just keep going. Let's talk, let's talk more podcasts. Let's get into this one. Here we go. I'm Michael Patrick King, executive producer, writer, and director of And Just Like That. And here with me, as always, we have executive producer and writer Julie Rottenberg. Hello. Hello. And executive producer <laughs> and writer Elisa Zaritsky. Hi. And joining this week's Writer Room discussion, we have the always delightful Samantha Irby. Welcome back, Samantha. Thank you for having me. Guess what? This is the joy of my life. <laughs> well, you're yes, the joy. You, of, you know what was the joy of my life? <laughs> wow, so she already out of the gate sounds like she just doesn't give a crap about being there. How we met you? you for the first time not over Zoom it at the party premiere. It was everything I wanted and more. I know. It made me sad that we weren't all in a room together writing this. I am irrationally mad that they got to have a party over this pile of shit that they gave us. Show. I know. And all those lunches we could have had together at I least know. and drinks so after true. work. Well, also mm -hmm. the crazy thing was we met you for the first time right as we were setting foot on the red carpet for the premiere, which could not be a, a more <laughs> insane and awkward situation. So suddenly we're posing for pictures. Which explains so much about the terrible writing. And you know, I'm honestly surprised they haven't used this more as a, an excuse for the abysmal readings. With Samantha, and all we wanted to do was just hug Can and I just squeeze say, you. so I did not know we were going to get our pictures <laughs> taken. Yeah, oh that my was God. shocking. We were just going to like, because I was like, who cares about like right. the writers? writers. Well, right. I was like, who cares about us? We're just so some of the self most self-important people on the project are saying this. That's that's pretty funny. Just going to talk to people. And then they told us that we had to have our picture taken. And I was like, I turned to Retina and I was like, wait, wait. <laughs> By who? <laughs> she pointed. By everyone. <laughs> yeah, she pointed. Oh, you guys, they're so funny. Can you believe the hijinks going on with this group? It's all the cameras and I, that's when I was like, oh, like my heart fell out of my butt. I was not prepared <laughs> for. I can't figure out why the writing is so bad in this. That part. Yeah, she that says she's talking. not prepared, but yet yes, she shows she up in a amazing. very chic black running suit, bringing Whoa. it. Some part of her, subconsciously, some part of her was aware that yeah, she had yeah. to look she good. Was no, ready I for wanted to look up. good for you. <laughs> As Gloria <laughs> said, mission accomplished. Can I say that as a newbie to this, I've worked in TV before and I have written books but I have never worked on anything 
with this sort of cultural impact. So you guys completely <laughs> screwed up and ruined for us. Thanks a lot. And at the risk of like sounding like a baby, um, it's a little bit like walking around as an open wound. Yes. When a hundred percent, it's like I'm listening to like the same podcast I always listen to, but now all of a sudden they're talking about this thing that really? I worked on, and it's like a shock, right? I'm like, oh, I did not expect that you would talk about this and that you would have opinions. Um, so I have spent the last week unfollowing and unsubscribing. <laughs> I, I, you know, I from a lot of shit. I'd like to remind everybody that this is the same woman that claimed she got, I can't say it on YouTube, but the threats will just say, um, because of her work on the show. I just, I, you know, when I first heard that, my first instinct is to say, oh my God, it doesn't matter how much we hate the show. Nobody should ever have to live through that. But so many overwhelming, many of you pointed out, you don't believe it. And you know what? You turned me around. I think you're right. I think she's full of herself and full of shit. Because they hurt my feelings. If you've been unfollowing people now, <laughs> wait until episode oh. five, which I am. First of all, I embrace it. I, I have come so long. I'm like a dinosaur in show business. <laughs> I'm now at the point where I'm like, do you know how hard it is to get anyone to have a water cooler moment when no one's shit. even at an office and water coolers are not allowed? <laughs> and all of a sudden, it's like in the news for days. And that is thrilling because people are paying attention. You know, they're, they're, they're having an aggressive relationship or they're having a love affair. It's mm -hmm. a split. And that's mm -hmm. what more can you ask? Right. But I'm telling you right now, we're getting about to get into some deep public opinion waters. Yes. With episode five. A Again, showing how full of themselves they are. I believe it actually started around episode two. That's when I started to notice it. And I started noticing other people saying the same thing. We held out hope on op episode one. And then by episode two, it was like, oh, God, what have they done? Tragically hip, crafted and written by Samantha Irby. Woo. Listen to the pride in their voices and the celebration and the cluelessness of them, truly not knowing their audience. This is the episode where Carrie breaks her hip, has to pee into a bottle, and Miranda and Che hook up in the kitchen, among other things. I am going to get off the internet until the end of January. No, <laughs> you can get off the internet or you can get some armor. Michael Patrick King is so full of himself. You know what? You could get a fucking clue. Yeah. Because yeah, both existences that. are necessary if you're going to keep going forward. Mm -hmm. Now, this no, episode. That is true. This is the first script that was handed to me by Samantha. And I want to tell you that a typical television script is 40 pages. For him. Samantha <laughs> yeah. shamefully handed me 63 pages. Again, the glee, the pride in this drivel this work that they've handed in and you guys she has since come out and said that she had very little say in in different production things and trying to backpedal on what responsibility she had and yet here we're hearing oh nope she turned in 60 some odd pages and i <laughs> loved every minute of it because because michael patrick king is a complete narcissist and kiss ass and i'm sure somehow she kissed his ass with it, so he's all for it. It's the strangest circle jerk <laughs> in of a writer's room I've I've just ever seen. But don't me. try this at home, guys. Yeah. If you're yeah. writing a half script, hour. no, do Only try it. Samantha no, Irby. No, can... I just. Oh my god! Can we please get into this episode? This is awful. Disagree. Get away with that shit. Nope, I Correct. disagree. Mm, if it's okay. 63 good pages, when I started working. Uh, back in the prehistoric area on Murphy Brown, <laughs> my first script that I handed Diane English was 72 pages. But you were uh, Michael Patrick hour. King. Yeah, but <laughs> that's how you be. See it? They just live in their own little world where they just verbally jerk each other off and pat each other on the back. And this is why the show is so bad because nobody was there to say, what the heck is going on? Come a <laughs> okay. good writer. Okay. By looking directly at the story <laughs> as it exists. And what I loved about Samantha's angle. All right, the episode is basically starting with Carrie has a hip problem. But I want to rally around. When Samantha wrote the scene where Carrie goes to the hospital, 
Not only were Carrie and Miranda in the scene, but in her mind, she looked around and said, who else is in this scene? Who's look, who, who, who else would talk? And that's to me like an accordion. It just mm-hmm. opens up and all of a sudden, my favorite line. This is the part of the episode where I remind everybody that Michael Patrick King is the same one that voiced the sandwich that harassed Miranda. So every time he talks, just think about him saying, eat me, because that was the same guy. Ugh. That shows you as an enormously skilled writer is you knew reality was when you go to the hospital, you have to stand and fill out boring, boring forms. I'd also like to point out how the circle jerk continues because... Michael Patrick King in an earlier episode was saying how he hired Samantha Irby and now he's going on on about how great she is because he hired her. (laughs) Admission forms. And you knew you as a bitch viewer didn't want to (laughs) see Carrie go through that. And you created this joke, which is so perfectly crafted because not only is it funny it takes away a lot of time that you don't have to stand and watch is i filled out the forms online did we just get a 45 minute explanation as to why i filmed out the filled out the forms online is funny these are the laziest writers i've ever heard in an extremely productive panic attack and that line to me is TV writing in its finest. (laughs) Grazie. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So let's just recap what the episode is actually about. We wanted an episode that somehow became about Carrie having an experience that had nothing to do with death. And so Kelly in the writing room had this weird congenital birth hip thing. So just because it happened to a writer doesn't make it funny or clever enough to happen to the character. We only have 10 episodes with these people, and this is how you're choosing to pass the time with them. Which was a, a, a weird malfunction in her hip, and she had this surgery. She thought it was a back problem. She thought it was... Yeah, she thought it was everything pain. that Carrie thinks yeah. it is. But in reality, it was just a pain. And if you notice, it's alluded to in the second episode where she says, sometimes my back big has to rub it. So when we realized, oh, Carrie can have surgery and it can be. It's so weird how excited about this he is, isn't it? Something that her (laughs) friends rally around her. And it's realistic because it happened to fabulous Kelly. We got to give her hip problem. So we got the best of all possible worlds. We got to make the old lady jokes that everybody at home is thinking. Pause for reaction. (laughs) And then we got to say, no, fuck you. She's not old in this episode. But the really rallying call was how you need your friends when you're in a situation where you're vulnerable and infirmed and how the episode proves that there's still a hole where Mr. Big isn't because friends have their own lives. So that was the episode. And we also used it to be... The fact that Carrie is home alone and sedated gave us the very bizarre abstract window. Sorry, I'm just forgetting to talk here because I'm listening and thinking, this is so weird. They are so into the storyline, and I don't know about you, but I just found it so bizarre. It didn't do anything for Carrie. It didn't continue her story at all it didn't continue her as a character at all it's just a reason to put her on drugs and tell a loopy story about samantha to bring the carrie storyline and the miranda storyline together in what i think is the most complicated scene i've ever tried to navigate are we talking about the fingering scene what which is carrie asleep on half the amount of pain medication, which allows her to wake up in the middle (laughs) while Miranda's being fingered by Che. Oh my God, you guys, he just said fingered. Ugh, I'm gonna throw up. That's so gross. Oh, he usually says thrust a lot. This time he said fingered. Which, like, even take Carrie out of it. Miranda is married. (laughs) It's like, it's already such crossing such a threshold. This is also the part in the episode where I like to remind everybody that Samantha Irby on her very first episode said she most relates to Miranda and she 
likes to write for Miranda because she sees herself as Miranda. So why would you screw over a character, no pun intended, this much if she's your favorite? And then add to it in her friend's. best friend's apartment where and, she's you know, sleeping. And, you know, that fingering scene is written explicitly exactly what you see. Exactly. <laughs> Samantha was all in. And what is oh, yeah. added is the magnificent sort of, I'm going to call it, uh, I've, since I've referenced dinosaurs, Miranda's paleolithic orgasm. Ew, you guys, what the hell? <laughs> Ew, he grosses me out so bad he should definitely be on a list somewhere. Ew. This like giant noise coming out of her, which was Cynthia's first instinct. Please tell me you remember what the hell he's talking about. Do you remember the noise that Miranda makes during it and that Che's covering her mouth and it's the most discur- disturbing, disgusting. I had so many funny comments about the noises she was making. And Gillian Robespierre, who is the director, was like, what's happening? Should it be smaller? (laughs) And I was like, I think that's Cynthia's instinct. I think Cynthia has had a lobotomy and lost all of her instincts. And what I started to like about it was that it was the birth of something. Mm -hmm. It felt like labor pains Mm -hmm. and birth rather than titillating like and there are versions literally there are versions where she goes "Eh." oh my god you guys oh i'm so uncomfortable i'm cringing so hard he's making the noise make it stop make it stop Uh (laughs) Uh and i was like how seriously he is making the noise and everybody's just laughing hysterically again do we see why this writing is so awful are we going to jumpstart this into comedy? Because Cynthia will do whatever you ask. And Cynthia and Sada were like, oh, my God, here we go. Ew. Yeah. But, mm-hmm. of course, that was my biggest request for Samantha. You must be here when they're fingering. Nope. Just a big fat nope on that one. Ew. And also, you we got to change this girl's name. We already have a Samantha. We're good on Samantha. We, I don't. I don't want to taint it with this one. Yes, Who's Samantha. going to get in there? What happened to that promise? For, for bringing us well, back. As long as bringing you us have back another to... job. Yes. Like, you'll be on set that day. <laughs> I had another job, but here's the thing. It's good that I wasn't there because I don't know that I could have handled it. I would have mm. soiled myself. Oh, my God, you guys. She, oh, oh, no. It's as bad as the Michael Patrick King noises. No. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, they really think they are the funniest people ever. Because it's so hot. The- I mean, I don't know if anyone did any behind the scenes lobbying. I did not. So when this episode was assigned to me, I was like, oh man, I'm really going to write a horny. Oh, we definitely didn't get that sex scene for these two. I could like see it in my, it was perfect. Damn this load of pants. She just keeps saying how perfect she did and how perfect the scene was that she wrote. Seriously? Um, But you know what, like, surprised and delighted me? Please don't encourage Michael Patrick King again. He'll just start making the noises. Was Cynthia in the fight with Carrie. So I noticed it with Michael Patrick King. I always want to call him Harris. <laughs> I'm thinking Neil Patrick Harris, but... Michael Patrick King and with Samantha Irby, everything they say is so slow and drawn out and measured. It's like they think everything they say is just the most important thing in the whole wide world. So they need to draw it out and make you wait for it and stuff. It it's really an annoying thing that I notice. Mm. Or I I mean it it feels less like a fight than a Oh no, oh. it's a fight. When I think it's a declaration. She, at first, before she gets really upset the way she how you can tell that something has shifted in her right can't imagine why carrie would possibly be mad at any of this right i mean her body okay so she just had surgery she's you know messed up in the bed her caretaker is occupied her boss is there with tequila after a surgery that you're on pain medicine and 
and is fingering her married best friend. Like, of course she's going to be pissed. She's like giggly and like Miranda's not a silly person. Correction. She used to not be a giggly, silly person, but this reboot has got her so acting so weird that she has been if you watch her. I think in that moment you get a brief glimpse of like she's so good at switching from this sort of like euphoria and then coming back down to earth. Like that was really astonishing to me. Like I know she's a good actress, but I was like, I re I felt all those emotions, even as they were changed. Let me just wade through the bullshit here and just explain what she's actually saying. I'm such a good writer. Pause, pause, pause. Uh, that, and I identify as Miranda, pause, pause, pause. So the way I've written her is so perfect that uh, it's just wonderful and I get caught up in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was a phenomenal day on the set when we did that because not only was Cynthia doing that, but aside from the fingering, then you have Sarah Jessica literally sliding out of a bed finding that knife edge between tragic and comic. Nope, you definitely did not find that. (laughs) To the point where, I mean, there's a moment where Sarah Jessica lands the whole thing when she blows the straw out of her mouth that tells the audience, it's okay, you can laugh, it's crazy. (laughs) I think they're confusing genuine laughter with like confused laughter, like uncomfortable, I don't know what to do with this laughter. But the fact that she is so realistic, when I looked at it, I was like, wow, this is the miracle worker, only she's Annie Sullivan and Helen Keller. (laughs) This performance is... Only you would make that. Well, but it's because she's doing both parts Parts, in that moment. She's the the strong one and the out of control one. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. I was just like, this is both of the scenes, both of the two pieces that Mm -hmm. go together. They're both all in. The only way someone can be when they're committed to the story and the characters. And then when Mm -hmm. Carrie calls her on her shit, just sitting there so strong. Oh, my God. Are we watching the same show as these people? They're so proud of themselves. I thought this was the most cringy, awful stuff. I don't even get freaked out by Twilight humor, whatever. I could be a 12-year-old, too. But I just, it just... It wasn't necessary. I don't think it added anything. It didn't show any of them in a good light. And I don't know why we needed to see that. And what was so arresting for me was Miranda. She's on the toilet. She shuts the door. When she comes out, that fake armor she put up was Mm -hmm. so chillingly real. And it said so much about... So again, here comes the circle jerk. Let's all say what a great writing job we did. I know the audience hates it and they've been saying so, but you guys are wrong. Let me tell you why it's great. About the fact that she wasn't being her Mm -hmm. true self with Carrie. She went back to playing this role. And then the minute Carrie calls her on it, how it breaks. Like Mm -hmm. she just shatters you with her... Like, okay, we're going to be honest now. Mm -hmm. You want me to be honest? Like, that's what it felt like to me. And how surprising that, and I I think real also, that these two friends who we have always assumed and seen share everything with each other. What a revelatory moment that even Miranda's been holding on to this secret of her own unhappiness from her best friend in the world. Mm -hmm. I think... Sadly, that's also what we do sometimes with the scariest facts of of what we're going through. You know, yeah, you know, like when you want to get fingered by your best friend's boss. You know, when that happens, it's so relatable. P.S. I keep saying fingered, and I'm making myself laugh because it's not my favorite word, and I feel like I'm in high school saying it. (laughs) so much i don't mean to i just that's what they're saying that's what i'm saying that's what happened but Uh, when you come out it's a moment where the internal engine of your truth upstages your fear 
that society slash your friends and family will not accept you anymore. So the idea that the profound physical yearning to some abstract thing that Miranda's feeling, some connection to this powerful being, which is sort of awakening something in her, that she stops thinking about the other parts of the world. Okay, let me wade through the bullshit here as well. Um, Miranda is completely self-centered here, doesn't give a shit about her friend who just had surgery, and just cares about getting off in the kitchen. Ew. And that means Carrie's in the next room. She doesn't give it a thought. Of course, it helps because we're writers and we gave her a lot of tequila and pot mm-hmm. to <laughs> open that door. Again, the sycophantic laughter, like they... Everything they say is just the greatest, funniest thing in the whole wide world. But the reality is that's stronger than her fear of somebody discovering it. It's bigger. And that's what's exciting. And I've always, always loved to carry Miranda showdown. Mm -hmm. I mean, the episode splat from the series when they're talking about Petrovsky and you go to Paris, that bald, scalded unadorned Mm -hmm. emotion that they do. Yeah. Um, Does anyone have any feelings? Because I have big feelings about what the audience is going to feel. So this should be good because they're so out of touch with what we actually feel. I'm curious to see what they think we're going to feel. About Miranda and Steve. Because I think 90% of the couples watching this are Miranda and Steve. (laughs) And ouch. And I love that part of (laughs) my relationship. Wow. Just wow. Again, I'm so rarely speechless, but I'm speechless that that's how he sees everybody. What a sad and boring life he leads. And I think of that, of the 90% of They identify. Let's just say they identify. They identify. That is what most marriages are to one degree or another. But I maintain that of the 90% of the couples watching and identifying and saying, yeah, I have a ritual with my spouse every night when we watch television and kick up our heels, I think there's also a segment of that 90% who will, who are restless, especially after or rather during the pandemic <laughs> that we're still, that we're still struggling with. And, and it's not just my my personal opinion. I mean, there have been articles written about the divorces that have come mm. out of this time. I think there's, it's been a come to Jesus, I think, for couples. Um, can, is this the rest of my life? I'm just sitting here and sometimes I forget to talk because I'm just blown away by the arrogance and the self-centeredness of it all. But just that they think this is what people want to see. I don't know about you, but we've all lived through this bullshit for the last couple of years. And I, I just don't, I don't need to, I don't need to see that to quote Valerie Tarish. I don't, I don't need to see that. I, that's not what I come to sex in the city slash and just like that for. Is this what I choose? Is this person enough? It, I wonder though. I agree. You're probably right, Michael. 90% of marriages, people will identify with that. The routine. The routine. Not the lack of sex. Not yes, that. Sure. Yes. Just the, the calmness comfort, of maybe it. Maybe the comfort yes. and security. The Hello, I am the dessert ritual queen. I'm here for it. <laughs> but I do wonder when they see Miranda doing that, if they will go to their very judgmental heads, which mm-hmm. we're also seeing. Yes. Okay, let me wade through this bullshit a little bit. So what they're saying is if we agree with this show, then we it's because we relate to it. If we do not agree and think the show is terrible, it's because we're judgmental about it. And it's easier because Steve is a good man and he is a good father and he is a good husband in many ways, I'm going to venture to say. A good partner. And, and how yeah. dare she betray him like that. But I wonder how many people will own that they might aspire to and if they own stray it, from their marriages. If they identify with that need to break out, 
do they judge it? Do they like right. that feeling? Right. Do they like the escape fantasy of yeah. it? Or do they resist it and rage against it? I also think that when we were filming it and I saw Cynthia crack open emotionally as Miranda when she says she can barely even say the words, I'm not happy. Mm-hmm. So ask yourself this, why are they trying to crack these characters wide open like this? Why are they trying to destroy them? I actually turned to, I think, you two, and I said, she just gave us permission for the storyline. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's it. That's all I can handle of the bullshit. I gave you a supersized one this time because I really wanted to get into the more up-to-date reca- or whatever uh, podcast episodes, and I wanted to react to those. So we're going to keep going with these because, holy shit. Oh, God. <sighs> We need to all go out for a drink after this. Seriously, it's been a lot. But thank you guys so much for watching. I'm dying to know your comments below. Let me know. I'm sorry if I get repetitive. I sometimes feel like all I can say is, oh my God, they're so full of themselves. But seriously, oh my God, they're so full of themselves. It's a lot. It really is. And it's hard to articulate my frustration because it is so frustrating because I do care so much about the original show. And I'm so pissed at what they've given us now. Ugh, anyway, I hope you guys have a fantastic night or day or whatever it is. I appreciate each and every one of you. I sincerely do. You take care, stay healthy and safe, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.